This video is brought to you by Honeycomb. No, not not that Honeycomb. No, not not that Honeycomb either. Uh, uh, forget it. Welcome back, Novians. We're here at the Chimera headquarters, um, the organization I'm in, and I just want to show you um, a really quick overview of why I chose this uh, as my org. Um, I am pretty big into shipbuilding. I've always done that in, in the games I've played in StarMade, Imperion, uh, Space Engineers. I was going to say Star Citizen, but you don't build ships in there. You just spend a bunch of money. Um, which I have so don't get on me and say oh you're giving star citizen crap nope I I'm I'm almost a space marshal in there so shame on me for that but <laughs> moving on um, they have this really cool store with uh, all the stuff that they make so you have all of the parts for all of the ships that you could possibly want to build um, with the exception of some small things like um, programming boards um, data data cubes or whatever they're called um, relays stuff like that but as far as the raw components of any ship that you could possibly build it's all here you can just buy it and um, not have to run to three different markets to try to find the best price and the way he's got it set up is you just um, find the thing you want. You hit H to take a look at it. So this is the large engines. And let's say I want 10 of those. Well, I'll just get them out of the uh, vendor here um, and just go on about it. You know, um, they also have lockers for members. So if um, if I'm building a ship, I can just buy this stuff, have it go straight to my uh, linked container and then build my ship um, outside on the tarmac uh, just off that stuff. And uh, if I need to uh, coat my ship with uh, honeycomb, they also have a free honeycomb room. So all you have to do is mine. And uh, let's say that you want to make aluminum honeycomb. Well, you would just go get a bunch of bauxite, which is the aluminum equivalent, drop it in the container here, and then you would come over to the machine. So you would come in this machine and make sure it's stopped. Um, go to the schematic selection and you have all of these different aluminums that you can make um, aged aluminum aluminum painted light gray aluminum painted sky etc etc and basically all of the tier ones you got the carbon iron um, silicon all of the tier one schematics are in this machine um, so if you wanted to let's say make uh, polished white aluminum you'd select that hit apply and then just click start and the ore that you put in would automatically uh, be processed and turned into that uh, honeycomb um, now I know that list is gonna be a little overwhelming and you say oh, well how do I know what all of that honeycomb looks like how do I know what orange aluminum panel which is horrible don't ever use that how do i know what orange aluminum panel looks like well some players have uh, answered that question by setting up uh, voxel libraries of all of the honeycomb so you have two of them uh, in particular that most people use you have the block warehouse and meg's voxel library now meg's voxel library is set up uh, kind of like very large very open um, it's organized by this is tier one, uh, this is tier two, the next floor is tier three, and so on and so forth. Um, I prefer the block warehouse because it's easier to search exactly what you're looking for. So if I say I want to make something out of wood, I don't know which wood I want to use. I'm going to go to the block warehouse. I'm going to use their library on the third floor, and I'm going to pick the wood I want. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to select it, and then I'm just going to have it run. Um, right now, I've got... A bunch of wood running um, in here uh, you can see in the input I there's still 5,000 liters I put 30,000 liters of uh, coal in there um, and it's still it, it's still making me some polished wood here uh, polished brown wood um, but anyway if I wanted to go to the block warehouse you use the 
surrogate VR station, you just click F on it. Um, it is actually the fourth one in the list right now because it's high up there on uh, on weekly visitors. Um, or you could just type in lock warehouse and it's right there. So you just click on it, you click connect and you head over there and you can take a look. Um, obviously don't ever buy anything in VR because as soon as you come back from VR, it drops your entire inventory. So helpful tint, hint, helpful hint, don't ever buy anything in VR. It's, it's bad juju. Um, you're going to waste your money and you're going to waste somebody's uh, materials and or blueprints. So just don't do it. All right. So let's take a trip over to the block warehouse and I'll see you there. All right. So we're here at the BSC block warehouse. As you can see, they've got some uh, pretty interesting art that's been done with voxels and just with the in-game tools, some voxelmancy, some smoothing. Uh, it's really quite impressive. Um, there's a sign, a picture over there just made with voxels. So that's that's not a display. That's actually done um, with honeycomb. So that's actually pretty cool. We got these lamps up here that are made out of honeycomb. Um, and they take donations and things like that. Um, you can get this ant blueprint uh, if you really wanted a giant ant. I know some people have taken this ant and turned it into a spaceship, so you might see the flying ant spaceship. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, the other thing this place offers is bulk orders of honeycomb supplies. So if you need marble, they've got, you know, 1,000 batch uh, of marble, pure iron, pure alarm, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. Uh, all that good stuff. Apparently they're selling fuel here too, which is a pretty good price. Uh, so if you run out of fuel, but the thing we're interested in is in the back corner here, there is an elevator. You can also go up the stairs. Uh, it goes to a pretty cool casino area and we're just going to go up. And this is the block warehouse, uh, library, so to speak. Um, so every kind of, uh, honeycomb that you could want is in here and it's set up by uh grade so you have your tier one pure so you have iron aluminum carbon silicon steel uh selenium um you've got your tier twos over here so copper chromium stainless steel uh tier threes um tier fours and so on and so forth tier five um, and products, so marble, carbon fiber, concrete, wood, uh, that sort of thing, plastics and brick. So um, as we saw earlier, you can select um, the type of voxel you want from the, vo I mean, the type of honeycomb that you want from the honeycomb machine. Um, and you see a whole list. Uh, you saw the whole list there of all the different aluminums that we could possibly make. So if you're interested and you're like, oh, I really want to make my ship out of aluminum because it's lightweight. And, um, but I have no idea what any of the honeycombs look like. Well, we're going to go to aluminum here, go up the elevator. And now we're standing in front of all of the aluminum honeycombs. So it goes all the way down this way. So I guess it starts here. So I type H, um, on these and you can see what they are so if you find a honeycomb that you really like oh like this is pretty cool glossy aluminum hmm so you can make a, uh, a engine cover or something out of that maybe some uh, some accents so pretty cool there uh, some of these other things I have my um, my main landing area made out of aluminum painted black because uh, it just it gives it that kind of like landing zone feel for me um, and then you have other things like galvanized. Um, I have a ship that's made out of polished white aluminum. And then this ugly, horrible, uh, you may like it, but uh, makes me think of like, I don't know. I suppose you could you could make like the uh, the original ship from Aliens or Alien out of this stuff. Um, cause it kind of looks like that, or maybe a star destroyer, I guess kind of like a star destroyer pattern there. Um, but this goes up four floors and it's all of the honeycomb in the entire game. All right. So I'm back at Chimera headquarters here and we're going to take a look at, uh, this little ship I built, um, in terms of some of the basic things that you should know, uh, when looking at a ship or when building a ship that will help you out in the long run. 
Um, I will be doing a video later on that goes into how to build a ship from scratch uh, and we'll go through step by step. Um, but I just wanted to show you a few of the basic things um, that go into making a ship. Um, the this uh, let's not open that yet so I can show you how to do that. But um, this up here is the build helper. If you hit tab while you're in build mode, um, you can move your mouse around freely. Um, but this shows you things like how your fuel capacity, uh, delta V's, there's just a lot of information stuck in here. Um, what's what your mass is, uh, your mass breakdown, um, weight, all that good stuff. Atmospheric engineer, um, which is your atmospheric flight information. This will tell you all of your stats while in atmosphere. Uh, and you can just drag this around the screen. Usually when I'm building, I'll put it over here in the corner. Um, and, and the way it works is if you're in build mode and you hit V, that will pop up there um, in kind of a transparency. So if you're if you're building around and you just want to get rid of it, you just hit V, it'll go away. Um, you also have your axis rotation, which tells you about your roll pitch and yaw. Um, and this is this is kind of a whole video in itself. Um, but you kind of just want the numbers to match up in terms of uh, roll pitch and yaw. So like you can see this right here, um, it goes uh, the columns go across and down. So this number and this number should be the same. This number and this number should be the same. And this number and this number should be the same. Otherwise, you have some wonky stuff going on and uh, it will cause issues while you're flying your ship. Whether it's your ship just starts drifting to the side or your nose keeps pitching down, usually that's an issue with your axis rotation. Um, so as we look at this ship, let's just go over like the basic parts obviously you have the cockpit controller you can also get away with a hovercraft seat or a command seat um, they all do the same thing um, just on this cockpit looks a lot sleeker to me um, so that's what i went with um, you have the adjusters you have the wings um, you have stabilizers i have a stabilizer back there um, you have the engines right um, so these are military uh, engines I've got two smalls two uh, extra smalls and a medium and then you have your ailerons um, these all do different things for you uh, the best way I can explain that is that your wings uh, basically the wing is like the average uh it's the middle ground in terms of uh drag to stall angle ratio so it's about even uh it'll create an average drag it'll create an average stall angle so it'll fly like a normal plane um, ailerons have the best drag ratio but the worst stall angle so if you just put a bunch of ailerons on your ship um you can make some really crazy turns or maneuvers, but if your ship's not going directly uh, straight, if your ship is not equal with the horizon, it's just going to fall or it's just going to stall and that's going to cause you to crash. And then you have your stabilizers. Um, the stabilizers, that's what these are. You can actually use these as wings like you can see on the back. They have the worst drag ratio, but they have the best stall angle. Um, so you can do some... Uh, hard turns you can do go straight up or straight down without worrying about your ship stalling and falling out of the sky um, it does cause you uh, drag which is going to reduce your speed overall so if i didn't want to have sharp turns if i didn't want to be able to maneuver great i could just go with wings all around you can even use a wing as a horizontal stabilizer um, it'll work um, but as I said, stabilizers are actually the best for, for turning because of the uh, angle that's on the back of them. Um, I don't want to pull this off my ship because it's boosted. Um, and that's another thing. Uh, depending on your skills, you can get your components boosted. Um, you can either do, your, do that yourself by training your skills up, uh, or you can pay somebody in-game to boost uh, your equipment. And if we go into our skills... Um, all of that's going to be under piloting. So as you increase some of these things like atmospheric fuel efficiency, uh, it's a negative five fuel consumption, right? Well, if you look at some of these, 
Um, let's find one. I think it may be uh, under element handling. Um, okay, here we go. Atmospheric engine handling. So it provides plus 10% max thrust when put down. This is the important part, when put down. So if you train this skill up and you haven't, and you put your, let's say you put your uh, engine down when you were level one or level zero, and then you train this up to level two. It does not apply unless you pick that component up and put it back down. So what I could do is if I had this at level five and somebody wanted their engines boosted by 50%, they could pay me and I could uh, go in here and I could just pull the engine off and put it back down. Now this is already boosted to level five, so I'm not gonna pull it off because then it'll ruin the, the boost. Um, it'll default back to my level two. So I had one of my um, um, org mates um, has level five uh, in atmospheric engines and a level four in space engines. I think he'll be level five in space engines a couple day. So another good reason to join an org is uh, boosts. Um, but anyway, if you get somebody to just pull your engine off and put it back on um, using the backspace key, uh, or they can just manually put it back on, that will give you that engine boost. And it'll stay on your ship until you, unless you just pull it off. Or, um, yeah, even if you crash, uh, it'll still stay on there. And the boosts stay on there on, on uh, pocket uh, ships too. So the ones you can put back into your pocket um, by collapsing, um, those keep their boosts on it as well. Uh, so that's just something to think about. Um, other things that are on the ship, I have my brakes um, that allow you to stop. And let me get out of build mode here. I'm going to lift this thing up. Ooh, lift up in the air. There you go. Uh, underneath, we have the hover engines. So I have one medium hover engine on the front and then four small hover engines on the back. Um, that's just for a weight ratio and kind of for looks. Um, I didn't want these things just sticking out on the front because it doesn't look um, very streamlined to me um, to have it like that. Um, so, yeah, those are the main components. So I have this uh, compact aileron S on the back, and that's just for um, me to be able to take off and basically do like the nose up almost 90 degree angle uh, into atmosphere. Um, that helps with that, and so do the... Uh, the stabilizers back here but these also help with lift um, just not as much as the wings do so sometimes it's better just to put small wings on things sometimes it's better to put stabilizers on things um, if you're doing a large craft like this hauler over here uh, you can see all of these are wings all these are medium wings um, because it doesn't need to do tarp tight sharp maneuvers it's a hauler so you can get away with just stacking medium wings up and that'll give you that lift uh, it doesn't need a bunch of other things um, like crazy ailerons and and uh, and stuff like that. You can see like on this one over here, um, this one has uh, wings, extra small wings up there. Um, hmm, I don't know where he's high. Oh, there they are. Um, and then a bunch of, no, those are air brakes. Huh. Where are the wings on this thing? I do not know. I did not make this thing. That's interesting. And it still flies. That's impressive. Oh, are they clipped through here? Yep, that's where they are. Okay, they're clipped in the back. So, yeah, this thing just uses wings. So it's not going to be the best at maneuvering. It's not going to be the worst at maneuvering. Um, it's just going to be middling ground. And you can kind of uh, counteract uh, all of that by just using the different components. So like I said, I've got two wings... A stabilizer and an aileron and all of that together makes this thing super maneuverable um, I could do turn on a dime I can flip around and just go the other way uh, it's a really nice ship it won't hit max speed um, because I guess I have too much weight on it <laughs> but I wanted a little bit of storage um, for running the market and back um, just so I don't have to stick stuff in my inventory uh, so that's that's me um, some people make pocket rockets, uh, that can hit like 13 K and they just have like a strip of, uh, of uh, honeycomb on it. Um, 
it's all up to you um, but you need those components um, if we go back into build mode you can see how all of those add up let's go back into build mode we'll look at the threat engineer uh, we'll look at the flight engineer so you have your max thrust that's how much your engines are pushing you have your brake force that's how much your brakes are stopping um, max speed is not actually your max speed um, I don't understand this calculation um, I guess it's yeah it's meters per second so uh, it, is there a way to switch that I don't know um, low altitude lift is how well you can get lift low to the ground and high altitude lift is how well you can get lift higher up in the atmosphere um, and then your cross section is just uh, your your uh, resistance that your um, ship is causing by uh, being either too blocky or or if you're more aerodynamic you build it more aerodynamic you get more of an aerodynamic boost right so if I just made this thing a giant cube my cross section would be horrible um, but it's not a giant cube <laughs> Um, so the things you need to keep aware of is your your max thrust needs to be over uh, 1.4 G's, I believe, and that is to counteract Alioth's gravity. So Alioth has 1 G of gravity. So if you don't have over 1 G max thrust, you're not going to get into the air. Um, your brake force, you should have at least twice the amount of thrust in your brakes. So my 33.6 G is a little overkill. Um, but this thing can stop on a dime. Um, and then the other thing to take a look at and know is your sustenation speed. Your sustenation speed, um, sustenation or sustain, is how fast you need to be going to sustain flight. So this 45.2 meters per second is how fast I need to be going in order to sustain my flight. Uh, in order to generate lift if i go under that i fall like a brick but as you can see my max speed is 367 meters per second so well over that 45.2 and as you build bigger ships you'll see like higher sustenation speeds so you need to counteract that with your max speed and you can see on like some larger haulers that they just have like a brick wall of engines um if we come over here to the horizon which is made by captain's customs uh, you can see just how many engines he has on there to counteract uh, the gravity. Uh, so the heavier this thing is, the more engines you need. Uh, and that's just because this thing carries a lot of cargo. So it needs a lot of thrust in order to hit that sustenation speed and get the ship in the air. And that's only part of it, though, because you can hit your sustenation speed and still be below 1G uh, which just means you won't get out of the atmosphere. So if you're if you're only going to be mining on a planet or you're only going to be flying on a planet, that's fine. But if you're going into space, uh, that's a whole other thing altogether. Um, and that is pretty much what I wanted to cover. Uh, if you have a ship, um, I would suggest slapping a res node on it um, just so you can res back on the ship. Uh, if you die and make sure to activate it just slapping it on the ship doesn't do anything you actually have to click on it to activate it um, you can have multiple res nodes activated at once um, always carry scrap with you because if you crash the ship you're going to need to repair it um, and you just use the repair tool uh, which is probably not bound um, but it's also it's in your nano pack it's this one right here repair tool just drag it to your bar and when something's damaged, you just click on it and you hold left click, just like when you're mining, um, and it'll repair that crate back up to normal. Um, how fast it repairs depends on your uh, scrap. So tier one scrap's gonna be the slowest, tier two scrap's gonna be a little faster, tier three scrap's gonna be a little faster. Uh, and if we go in here, you can see that my org sells uh, gold scrap for 42,000 for a batch of 50. Uh, which is good 100 uh, gold scrap will get you pretty well repaired i think i've used like i think i've totaled uh that cargo hauler out there and i've only used like 200 gold scrap to repair it back to full so it's not a bad deal um if you can get away with carrying gold scrap carry gold scrap and my final um trick for you is 
This game does not calculate uh, damage to players uh, at all. <laughs> so you can jump off the top of the world, burn up an atmosphere, fall down, hit the ground, and then go about your day because there is no fall damage yet. Now this is going to change. However, right now, that means that the only way you can die is if the ship um, explodes while you're in it. And by in it, I mean in a seat. So the way the game works is the ship crashes, the seat is destroyed, the seat tells your character to respawn. Um, and then you show up at the closest uh, res node, which may or may not be your ship, depending on if you've destroyed your res node. Um, so what I, yeah. if you know you're going to crash, if you know you're going to slam your ship into the ground and there's nothing you can possibly do about it, um, get out of your seat. <laughs> Don't sit in the seat if you're going to crash. So you may be like, oh, I can do, I can pull up, I can pull up. Mm, it, it, yeah, don't wait too long to say I'm not going to pull up. Get out your seat, let the ship crash. That way you're there, you can fix it. You don't have to respawn on the other side of the world and then bug one of your, your uh, corp mates or somebody else uh, to try, take you back out to your ship because uh, you died um, while you were in the seat. Uh, yeah, that's that's my biggest thing. I had a uh, ship um, that I bounced off of a, a moon. Um, don't ask me how. Uh, it's it's it happened. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, I had a ship that I bounced off the moon. I should have got out of my seat. I didn't. Luckily, um, I had a friend who was just walking around the ship at the time. He survived. I died, and then I had to um, talk him through repairing the ship through a. Uh, a, a discord um share screen <laughs> so it was an adventure but uh yeah it's better if you don't die and you can just help repair the ship um and that way you don't you don't lose anything because if your ship goes spinning off into space you're not getting it back um that's about it for this episode uh next episode i'm going to try to go through building a ship from scratch and we'll talk about uh things like adjuster placement uh hover engine placement wing placement um stacking wings um how important radars are uh, because if you don't have a radar at night it's pretty hard to see those towers that people build everywhere um and uh yeah we can also talk about why people build those towers everywhere um we'll talk about linking um, we'll talk about container hubs, uh, all the good stuff. Um, so if you're interested in building a ship from scratch, um, tune in for the next uh, episode as it is, and we'll go through all of that. So until then, if you like what I do, go ahead and like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to share my stuff on social media, I would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, stay safe out there. Uh, and if you crash, have scrap.